Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I want to do a talk on another one of my favorite Neville Goddard lectures, The Pruning Shears of Revision. And it gives us such a powerful technique for rewriting and revising our days to be in perfect alignment with our divine vision, thus changing our tomorrows for the better. But first, I would like to ask you to join with me in taking a nice deep breath. Thank you. Now let's get into it. Neville says, Now we will go back to the second of Genesis. It is said, And God placed man in the Garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. Now when you read this story, you think it happened thousands of years ago. I have come to tell you it is now. You are in the Garden of Eden, and you think you are shut out or banished. You are in it, and the garden is your mind. But you need, like every gardener, you need pruning shears. For you have slept, as we are told in the second chapter. Having slept, weeds have appeared in the garden, and the weeds are revealing themselves by the conditions and circumstances of life. For your garden is always projecting itself on the screen of space, and you can see by looking carefully at your world what grows in the garden of God. So he is telling you that you can see, based on looking carefully at the circumstances of your life, exactly what you've allowed to grow in your garden, that is, the mind of God, that is, your mind. Looking at the circumstances of your life, can you tell, through the quality of your friends, your relationships, your job, your happiness, what have you allowed to grow in the garden of God? If you are here, it is likely you desire to make use of your pruning shears. Neville continues, Now every man in the world is rooted in you who look out and see that world. Every man is rooted in me. He ends in me as I am rooted in and end in God. Because he is rooted in me, I cannot bear other than the nature the root allows. So he is in me, and any changes desired in the outer world can be brought about only if I change the source of the thing I see growing in my world. This is taking responsibility. We understand that when we look upon a seeming other, they are rooted in us. Our entire world is a reflection of the state of the garden of God. Therefore, no one is separate from you. If you see something you desire to change in your outer world, you must make the change at the root within your garden, the garden of your mind. Neville continues, So don't judge it, because you are the source of the thing that you are beholding. Now turn within and prune it by using these pruning shears of revision. Now this is how we do it. At the end of my day, I review it. I do not judge it, I simply review it. I look over the day, all the episodes, all the events, all the conversations, all the meetings. And then as I see it clearly in my mind's eye, I rewrite it. I rewrite it and make it conform to the ideal day I wish I had experienced. I take scene after scene, rewrite it, and revise it. And having revised that day, then in my imagination, I relive that day, the revised day. And I do it over and over in my imagination until this seemingly imagined state begins to take on to me the tones of reality. It seems that it's real. I actually did experience it. I have found from experience that these revised days, if really lived, will change my tomorrows. This is incredible because it is in that knowing that we can revise the past, that which seemed to have really occurred today, to be in alignment with our divine vision, in alignment with our ideal experience of the day. Then, we know that all time is now. There is no future, there is no past. You cannot bring it here and show it to me. Everything stands to change with the power of our infinite Christ self. That is our imagination. And he says that having lived these days, truly believing that you experience them as you revise them, will change your tomorrows. This is absolutely true. And it helps a lot when we are trying to go to sleep and we have something on our mind that we just wish hadn't occurred, something that went wrong in the day and you can't get yourself into the state of the wish fulfilled. You are able to revise the scene and believe that it went as you desired, believe that it went in accordance with your ideal, and your circumstances will be changed by the power of your assumption. Neville continues, When I meet people tomorrow that today disappointed me, tomorrow they will not. For in me I have changed the very nature of that being, and having changed him, he will bear witness tomorrow of the change that took place within me. It is my duty to take this garden and really make it a garden by using daily these pruning shears of revision. You have the power to use this every day. Every day, it is a powerful use of training and honing your imagination. Before you go to sleep, when you lay your head upon the pillow, go through your day, rewrite it, revise it, to be in perfect alignment with your ideal day. As you do so, you'll find that your tomorrows change. Maybe you didn't get everything done that you wanted today. Well, yes, you did. And believe that you did. And tomorrow you'll find yourself reflecting that productivity, maybe even making up for lost time. For no time is lost. All is now. Neville continues. 
I know from experience it will not only bring about these objectives and these changes, but the glorious thing is, it awakens in you the spirit of Christ Jesus, and you find yourself then not justifying, but forgiving. And you will realize that freedom and forgiveness are indissolubly linked. You cannot be free and not forgive. For the one that you would bind and judge and condemn anchors you by your own judgment of him, for he is rooted within you. If all others are rooted within you in the garden of your mind, then of course you can forgive them. And if you don't forgive them, then you do not forgive yourself. This is stated in the Bible, but it is so true. There are only seeming others. So that one that you may be judging and condemning at this point in time truly is linked within yourself. They may not be that same individualized spirit of God that you are, but we are all God and God is one. If they are rooted in you and you cannot forgive, then you do not forgive yourself. Use the pruning shears of revision to rewrite all things to be in alignment with your ideal. Neville continues, Sin to the mystic means missing the mark. It doesn't mean the violation of certain codes. Unless, of course, you have a mark and the violation fell short. Sin to the mystic is simply having an aim in life and failing to realize it. If you take me seriously today, then tonight, do not let the sun descend on any vexation of the day. Just look at it. Don't deny it. Don't duck it. Just look at it that you may prune and reshape it. Take the conversations with your friends today. Were they pleasant? Were they arguments? No matter what it is, were they negative? Then rewrite the script and imagine the conversation to be taking place that now you are rewriting for the first time. And it will take place. For everything that you behold in your world, though it appears without, it is within, in your imagination. No matter what you see in the world, it springs from the imagination. So that's where you go. That's the workshop. That is the garden of God. So to give an example, he takes a while to explain it in this lecture, but if you have a friend that is not employed, do not judge them to be unemployed. You can raise them from that state. Perhaps we would like if we could teach them how to imagine for themselves, but if that is not possible or they do not have the interest, there's no use in trying. Therefore, simply raise them from the state. Revise your conversation with them, congratulate them on their success, and believe that they are gainfully employed. You will find that somehow, some way, they are actually in your presence, explaining to you how they have a new, exciting opportunity, getting paid 25% more than they ever made before. They are rooted in you. If you wish to see them well, then do not wish any longer. Simply assume it is done by seeing them doing well in your imagination now. For all things spring forth into your world from your imagination, and if there is any change to be made, it must be made within. So be sure to rewrite, revise, and relive your day each night before you fall into sleep, and you will find your tomorrows changing for the better every day. Thank you so much for watching. I love you all very much. I'll see you next time. Take care.